everyone. Um, exciting week ahead, a difficult challenge ahead, uh, heading into Ames to play Iowa State, especially at night. I know they're a terrific home team and uh, been in there in the evening before at different places, and it's always a tough place to play. It's a great environment, um, and uh, we're going to have to have great preparation for us to be successful and have to have a great week. Um, excited about uh, the win as you went and looked at it last week. Um, did some really good things early in the game. Had a lull for sure. Uh, give Texas Tech credit. I think they did. They had a really good plan for us on all three phases of the game. And then uh, late in the third quarter, I think once Deuce had his big run, we we finally started to at least figure a few things out from the uh, run game and, and blocking some of their pressures and um, made some explosive plays. Then on defense, we were able to um, create some turnovers, especially in that second half. Felix had a, had a really big play. Julius had a really big play. And um, we needed those because uh, the tempo was uh, getting to us a little bit uh, with uh, the heat and stuff. And um, we're just glad to get out of there with a win and move on to the next week. And winning on the road is tough, as we know. With Khalid Duke, you had him a lot near the line of scrimmage, chasing the quarterback mm -hmm. quite a bit more last week. Is that kind of a change in general for him, or was that game dependent? That was game dependent. Um, we have to continue to look at that. But uh, with some of the things that we thought Texas Tech was giving us, we wanted to get him uh, into the fit or in, it closer to the action. And so, yeah, we have to continue to look at it. I don't know if that's first down, because we were doing that in early downs, uh, or is that more third down? I don't know what uh, uh, Coach Kleinerman and, and the defensive staff will think of, of this week. But uh, obviously, we, him, him having the production he had Playing some defensive end and and even some D tackle at times really helped us. Iowa State's kind of credited with starting that three three five scheme and yeah. the, the momentum towards that. Is do you keep that in mind when you're kind of deploying that against them this oh, week? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and uh, I'm sure it probably helps them too from an offensive standpoint, as far as what you've practiced all spring and fall. There's 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 some differences. There's some similarities for sure. And, and there's some differences. There's some different wrinkles. Uh, they've had so much success uh, in, in this system and uh, are obviously further along in it than we are uh, and have, have probably more adjustments than we do. Um, but um, it, it'll, be, it'll be a challenge. It's probably easier for us to coach the scout team on defense more than anything of calling our calls that uh, are at least close to what uh, they would do. With them kind of having the program and culture that they have now under Coach Campbell and almost being desperate for a win at this point, is it easy to kind of sell your guys that this is the best version of Iowa State that you're going to get? Well, we know we're going to get the best version of Iowa State. Uh, this is a big game for both programs. Uh, tremendous amount of respect for Coach Campbell. He does a phenomenal job and, and has there for an awful long time. And uh, he'll have those guys ready to play. I know that. And um, it. Uh, we talk about it every week. It really doesn't matter in this league what what happens the previous week. You you better make sure that you prepare and um, have great focus and, and have your best plans and your kids execute at a high level or you're not going to win uh, in this league. Adrian has obviously been very effective as a runner the last two weeks. We've seen his uh, running ability. I'm just wondering how much has it helped to have an offensive coordinator who ran that play himself very successfully at this school? I think it does help. Uh, I, I think um, us finding different ways to get him the football in space as well as Deuce um, makes it more difficult to defend us. Um, and last week was very unique. Uh, there were some more scrambles the week before against Oklahoma. Obviously, there was a few quarterback runs. We had a number of quarterback runs on the card, but didn't really get to them until we saw how Texas Tech was going to play us. And that was the one thing that we thought maybe uh, as the game progressed that they were short was the quarterback player. And so we just had to go to more of it. Put that on video the last yeah. two weeks. I'm guessing Iowa State's going to do everything they can to stop yeah. that. How, how do you keep it going if the defense does – find ways to well and that. it's uh every week's going to be different and how teams are trying to attack us just like how we're trying to attack other teams um you know you're going to be strong in some areas and it's us having the ability to find whatever that that not that weakness is whatever uh that area is that we can attack and obviously for us moving forward is it going to be the throw game you know 
Um, when you play so much what we would call single high, um, you're short in the quarterback run game. Uh, and when you play more split safety looks, which is what Iowa State does, even though it's three across, just like us, you, you, you tend to account for the quarterback more in, that, in those split safety looks. And so we have to be able to um, have our passing game in, in a plan based on what we see from them to be efficient, uh, to be explosive at times, but more than anything, um, to be able to um, help us uh, if people are going to try to put everybody in the box to stop the run the running game with the quarterback and the running back. Also, want to ask about uh, Xavier Hutchinson. What what have you seen that makes him so good for Iowa State? Well, he's targeted an awful lot. He's been there a while. He's been a really good player for a number of years. Very impressed with him. Competitive guy. Um, attacks the football. Really good run after the catch. Really good at the line of scrimmage, getting off press, and they make him a focal point of their offense. Um, for good reason, he's a, he's a difference maker that uh, probably got overshadowed by all the guys that had been there the last couple of years uh, that are playing in the uh, at the next level. But uh, uh, he's he's one of the best in the in the Big Twelve and probably in the country. You're nearing the midpoint of of the season and you're near the top of the country in turnover margin. I was curious what the keys have been to that success this season. Well. We need to win the turnover margin. That's that's a big recipe for success uh, when the wins and losses happen. And us, you know, finding ways, even though we're giving up too many explosive plays on defense, without question, we have to limit the explosives. And we've played some good offenses with some good um, quarterbacks, receivers that have been able to get the explosive play. But we've been able to over, overcome that by creating a turnover somewhere along the line. Um, so we emphasize the heck out of it, as well as um, Colin and the offensive staff continuing to preach how important it is not to turn the football over and change momentum. And we had one turnover last week that uh, we were lucky, lucky able to stop them after that. But uh, um, those are momentum changing plays, and, and we've just we have to eliminate them, and, and we have to continue to get them on defense. There's been an improvement in your third down defense from a year ago as well. I was. I was just curious, what, what's working in that department this, this year with the improvement? Well, we have been better on third down. Uh, it still comes down to trying to get them into third and long um, and not have the – we had too many third, one, two, and three last year, which is a um, – you know, offense has got the great advantage there. You know, we've been better on third down, but we still have given up too many explosive plays on early downs. And so, um, you know, that's going to be our focal point is – to try to eliminate some of the explosives and continue to be good on third. Coach, when you look at the way your defensive line has played this year so far, what kind of impresses you the most about the success that they've had? The amount of guys we're playing, the amount of guys that have made plays, uh, that we're rotating guys in, and just how hard, how physical they play. They play with an edge. Coach Tui and Coach uh, Wyatt do a phenomenal job of you know, rotating guys as well as um, coming up with some different plans based on uh, a player's technique offensively to try to put guys in position to be successful. And, um, you know, you see Eli and, and Felix, those are the two that, that, that are making a bunch of plays. But whether it's Mott, uh, whether it's Pickle, whether it's Dehance, whether it's Uso, and whether it's Nate, we have so many guys that uh, can help us in there. And I think our rotating guys is keeping guys fresh, which helps, uh, as well as those guys, those two coaches doing a great job te teaching techniques. You've kind of got Khalid Duke now playing in a little bit of a rush spot like yep. he did last week. How much of a boost is that to the pressure that the defensive line is able to create? Well, I think it helps guys like uh, Felix for sure. You know, um, putting those two on the same side a few times. Uh, like we did last week, uh, kind of, you know, you may have slid the protection a few times, but uh, uh, allowed one of them to have a one on one, which they're two pretty dynamic guys that um, uh, usually can win some of those one on ones. And, and we have to continue to find different ways um, to utilize Khalid. Um, we're still going to play him in, in our coverage stuff, but try to find different ways to utilize him in the in the in the rush game as well. I don't know if that's like I said, I don't know if that's first down or if that's third down stuff, but uh, he's one of our best eleven, and we just got to try to find ways to get him on the field in different uh, places. What are the complexities of that Iowa State defense? It they replaced I think every linebacker, and it seems like they haven't missed a beat this year. 
Yeah, uh, I, I think it starts up front. Uh, they're disruptive as, as heck. They've got one of the best defensive ends in college football, uh, which uh, always helps. We, we do too. Uh, that helps when you got a, a, a difference maker, a defensive end, and, and both teams do. Um, and then just the amount of time that those guys have been in the system and understand it, as well as the amount of film you have from guys like Mike Rose doing it the right way uh, and understanding um, – where the fits are, where where the strengths of the def defenses are, and limiting some of the weaknesses. Um, it's just a system that is really comfortable for their players. And, uh, you know, they, they just seem like the next guy that comes in uh, has learned from the previous one. Um, and it's a, it's a defense that's very aggressive, um, uh, very opportunistic, and uh, is uh, year in and year out one of the best defenses in the, in the league. Is there a potential to see Will Honus anytime soon? Um, I, I don't believe so. I, I think um, the injuries that Will has had uh, are probably not going to allow him to move forward. Um, you know, we're still holding out out hope, but uh, you know, he's had uh, uh, quite a bit of damage uh, on, on some injuries throughout his time, and uh, um, it's been tough on him. I know that it's been really hard. He's been in every game, every practice, and. Um, it's probably not responding the way that he hoped it would. And is Eli Huggins good to go for Saturday? Yeah, he's full go. Just your thoughts on uh, Hunter Deckers and what he does well? Well, impressed with Hunter. Uh, we recruited him. He'd been on our campus, a uh, uh, competitor, um, uh, can throw the deep ball, throw the short ball. He's elusive. Um, you know, he's this is only his, what, fifth or sixth start. Um, and so... Um, you know, maybe some some of the plays that he would want back or something. It just takes time with everybody to develop, and uh, I think he's a terrific football player. I, I just know um, the competitor that he is, um, and uh, um, we'll have our hands full because he can. He's he's not a runner, not a thrower. He's a dual threat guy that causes a lot of problems um, on the edge as well as. I think he reads defenses really well, and I think he he um, looks people off and and doesn't lock into receivers, and um, they've hit some explosive plays. So I think he's um, he's a really good quarterback that's continuing to to learn as a as a first year starter. Question about Austin Moore. It seems like a lot of times he's, this season he's been in the right place at the right time. Um, have you seen him make? Many mistakes or lose many plays. Yeah, um, he could probably tell you the plays that he does uh, miss because um, he's that kind of guy. And um, the the amount of work that he put in in the off season, not only on his body but on understanding defense or offenses and understanding our defense, how much he learned from Cody Fletcher was so invaluable for the kid. Cody taught him so much, and he's taken that uh, and, and really playing at really an all conference level. Austin's playing um, as well as anybody we have on defense, and he doesn't make mistakes. He made an unbelievable play on the fourth and short in the first quarter, or that thing might spit for a big gain, and he chases it down from behind. But uh, so happy with the way Austin's playing. Coach, the last, two the last two times you've played Iowa State hasn't exactly gone your way. Is there a little added, is there a little added emphasis this week on kind of getting the ship straightened? No, I don't really play into that. You know, whatever you did last year against a team or two years ago or three years ago on a team really has no bearing on, on what this year is. It's a new team. It's a, it's a new year. Um, uh, doesn't matter the teams we've had success against or the teams that we've not had success against through my, my entire career. I've just never, never really let that enter my mind. We, we just got to play a really good Iowa State team and, and get our guys prepared. A lot of time in Iowa, um, K State and Iowa State very similar. Fans have called it Farmageddon. I'm just mm -hmm. curious, what is it about Iowa State and K State, in your opinion, that makes the school so similar? Um, a, we're proximity. We're not that far apart. Um, we do battle them in recruiting quite a bit. They do a really good job, and seems like a lot of the the Midwest kids uh, that they're on, we're on, and vice versa. And um, um, we get some, they get some. Uh, we know a lot of the players. Um, there's, uh, I think, really good respect uh, amongst the coaching staffs uh, that uh, uh, both staffs are doing it the right way. And, you know, it's 
it's not the easiest place to win in Manhattan. It's not the easiest place sometimes to win in Ames. And you have to have the right kind of guys, and you have to have guys that believe in what you're doing and believe in each other and believe in the culture and believe in the um, the commitment that both universities have to football. I think that's um, that's what impresses me about Iowa State, impresses me about Kansas State. It's, um, it's not always the five-star kids. It's the kids that, uh, um, you know, want to – play their tail off for their school and for their for their brother in the locker room and um, great respect for what they've done. Coach, 66% of your plays over the last five games on offense have been rushing plays. From an analytics standpoint, how important is it to either lean into that or balance it out? Um, if we're going to rush for 340, not a bit. <laughs> and uh, if you have that kind of production and explosive plays, we should have run the ball more. Uh, but obviously... From an analytics standpoint, people are going to say, okay, how do we slow that down and make them throw it? And that's, that's the chess match of football that all of us are, are, are dealing with on a week-in, week-out basis and sometimes in-game basis. What are people taking away? What are they giving you? Both sides of the ball. Um, there's some things that we're not doing very well on defense that even though you'd say the next team or the next team doesn't do, we better shore that up or somebody is going to beat us with it. And, um, you know, it's that's the chess match that's great about college football. And the analytics are, are a big part of it, are important to it, but you still got to um, make in-game adjustments, and you have to go with a gut feeling sometimes. I went with a gut feeling um, this week on a fourth and five where it was a, a, a to-go deal. And um, we had just had a third and five where we um, – Thought we could have had a completion and we didn't. Um, and the gut, the analytics said go. My gut told me to to punt the football. Um, whether it worked out or not, we won the game. So it's easier to look back and say, huh, um, I could have done something different there. But sometimes the flow of the game doesn't consider analytics. Uh, you talked about gut feeling. Um, you said at halftime you got after the guys yeah. a little bit. Last week, I think Adrian said you were pretty fired up. Yeah. Uh, is that something you would kind of read the room, or how many times can you go to something like that in a year? Well, I don't go to it very much for starters because you don't need to with these type of guys. But uh, I probably saw the same thing that 50-plus uh, thousand did and all you guys did, that uh, we had a 13 nothing lead that could have been 20 to nothing, And we all know that when those things happen, it, it tends to flip. And somehow it got to 13 to 10 at half with all the momentum on their side. And I just didn't see a lot of life in the guys. And I, th I saw not, not panic, but I just kind of like shell-shocked, like kind of like probably I was, you guys were to say, we had a chance to put this thing, not maybe away, but make it a three-score lead at least. And we didn't. And I've been in this business, and you've seen enough things as well, that when you don't and you let somebody back into it, um, you know, it doesn't usually work out. The th and, and we talked about having, you know, how are you going to respond? How are you guys going to respond? I probably said it a little bit more direct than that. But how are you going to respond to the adversity that you just have? Because they have all the momentum. And even though we didn't start off great in the third quarter and it took us a little bit, nobody did panic. And then once we started to hit some of those explosive plays, um, you know, it's a game of momentum. And you saw the life come back into the sideline on Deuce's run. And then from there, we kind of took off. Also, let me ask you about Drake Cheatham. That's two guys now from Prairie View that yeah. had success with. Was there um, – had you seen him when you were scouting Stubblefield or how, how did no, that No, but I think about? Reg knows a lot of people, if you can imagine that. Um, Reggie knows some people. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, I think Reggie put us on him. There was a guy that was at North Dakota State with Gene Taylor and I named Delane Myers. I'll give a shout-out to Delane. Uh, Delane's a VP down at Prairie View and um, was friends with him at, at uh, uh, North Dakota State, and, and uh, he's one that's easy to call and say, can you tell me about Reggie? Can you tell me about Drake? And when Delane gave them the stamp, it was pretty simple for me that we they, they, they would fit here. What do you think he's given you this year? Um, boy, uh, tons of snaps, tons of experience, a guy that loves football. Uh, he's a junkie. He's up there like Kobe Savage is all the time and Josh Hayes and those guys, some of those newer players that 
want to keep learning more about the game. Um, he's an unselfish guy. He's playing a little bit more than Sincere, but both he and Sincere are playing, and they complement each other really well. Uh, I think Drake's excited about the opportunity he's been given to play Power 5 football at a place like this where football really matters and, and uh, the fan base loves football and the community loves football, and, and um, he's having a lot of fun out there. You mentioned this a second ago, but it seems like everybody now is going for it on fourth down way more than they did even two, three years ago. Yeah. How much does that change the way you coach games, knowing that that's probably going to happen more every Saturday? Yeah, well, we knew it going into Texas Tech that they, you know, they were going to go for it. The first fourth down, we knew it. We had calls and we prepped calls pretty quickly uh, during the week, meaning we would uh, simulate a third and six, get a four-yard gain, and come right back on the ball and go for it on fourth and two. So we had some calls that Coach Kleinerman knew he was going to make to try to get us lined up. I think that helped us a bunch for starters. And then secondly, it's still a game of about a game of possessions. How many possessions are there? How many are going to? How many possessions do you still have left? Um, I watched just a very little of Baylor and Oklahoma State, but Baylor goes for it on fourth down as much or more than anybody does. And, and they threw maybe a 70-yard touchdown or something on a fourth and five, I think it was, um, in the third quarter. I know they were down, but th that's the thing. If you, give it, if you give it up, maybe they score, maybe they don't, but you lose three or four minutes, you probably lost a possession. That's what it comes down to. You also mentioned last week that Adrian Lara, hope I'm saying that name right, yep. um, had impressed you on the scout team. Is uh, what, what, What's he doing there that's caught your eye? He's got unbelievable arm talent. Unbelievable arm talent, throwing the ball from you know hash to the opposite sideline. Granted, it's scout team stuff, and we're running cards, and he's he's delivering the ball. He puts it in tight windows. You know, uh, I'm excited for him as a young player. I don't know uh, how that you know translates to our offense. We'll find out a little bit in the open week. Just, um, but um, he he's doing a really good job. We've got a number of wide receivers there uh, that. Um, challenge our guys it's 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 fun because we have a really good deep group of scout team wide receivers and a quarterback that likes to throw it around on the scout team and uh that that's going to do nothing but help us as we keep moving forward i was <clears throat> excuse me iowa state statistically one of the best run defenses in the country and in the conference texas tech was up there as well until last week yeah. after having that having such success against texas Tech last, last week does that kind of help confidence wise moving into a other stout run defense like yeah it, it it all you know and I don't know um, all of Texas Tech's previous opponents as far as the quarterback run stuff that's the whole thing is you know if you have the ability to to run the quarterback on design runs or on scrambles um, you know it, it stresses a run defense it really does and I think we probably had more design runs than a lot of teams that they had played. Um, and so that was just part of our game plan. Uh, Iowa State's going to be a different look for us. It's going to be way different configuration as far as the front, the linebackers, and the secondary. Uh, and I know they're going to try to take it away. That's why we have to have uh, more options uh, than, than what we had on, on Saturday once that game started to take, take shape the way it did. And how you were impressed with what Kevin Forche did in his first kind of extended yep. stay on the field. Looking back at, at the film now, was there anything else that kind of stood out from from what he did? Um, just he was. I thought he was calm. I didn't think you know he had a lot of trade shift and motions that uh, and, and and tempo stuff that I think he'll get better and learn from. Um, but I thought he was calm. And I didn't think the stage was at all too big for him. He made a couple really good plays. I think that playing those substantial snaps. I mean, in the fourth quarter, he was on the field. Uh, Uso was on the field. Uh, Jacob Parrish was on the field. V.J. Payne were on the field in the fourth quarter together. And that those are guys that I mentioned that we're going to need as we go through this grind of the next uh, couple months. And uh, so to get those guys valuable snaps uh, early enough in conference play so that um, if you have one of those games where they have to maybe – uh, take the lion's share of the of the reps because of an injury or something uh, that they're prepared for it. School history, you have two guys with three sacks. How special were Felix and uh, Duke? Yeah, I didn't even realize that uh, until uh, a little while after the game. I knew that we'd had a number of negative plays against them, but uh, um, that's that's what we hoped for. Maybe not six, 
we hoped for a few sacks and a lot of pressure with the game plan that we had had for Texas Tech in trying to attack some of the protections that they had with those two. Um, but that was uh, pretty unique. I did not know it was the first time in school history either. And how pleased were you that Khalid got Defensive Player of the Week? Yeah, how about that? You know, kid didn't even participate in fall camp, and uh, uh, he's on week five, and he gets Player of the Week in in the league, and just sh it is just <laughs> continues to show the growth that he has, um, the strength coming back in from his injury, all that stuff. I'm excited to see Khalid playing at a level that um, I knew he I knew he could play at. I think we all knew that was in him. I know he was playing a different position, but um, when he is going a million miles an hour like he was on Saturday, he's, he's hard to block. Chris, are there finer points to defending a left-handed quarterback? Um, there are probably more coaching points as far as scramble and rush and, and where you're trying to get a guy to flush, flush out. Um, uh, that part of it, yes, uh, but, you know, the game is still going to be played the same as far as um, you know, run game and, and different looks. I mean, we, we boot to the left just like we would boot to the right. They do the same. Um, but some of the scramble and rush lanes maybe. Yep. Well, you make sure and grab Noah. He's a strength con and conditioning intern for us now. And he's down quite a bit of weight. Looks really good. Looks like a power lifter now. Um, and so Noah's around all the time. But uh, Gilly has taken over where Noah was at. And uh, so Gilly's kind of uh, this year's Noah and, and doing a pretty good job of, of – uh, replicating some of the things that Noah did as far as the energy at practice. He gets the guys going. and uh, um, yeah, But, uh, no, it's fun to have Noah back with our team. Adrian, um, Adrian said he was looking to – or the offense was looking to improve on turning turnovers into points. Yep. I was wondering how do you go about doing that? Um, I, I think Coach Klein would would agree, and we talked about it. Um, maybe our sequencing of some plays would help us in that in that time. Uh, during those couple times, we can't get behind the sticks. When I say behind the sticks, we can't get to second and ten or second and eleven, or have a false start and be first and fifteen. Um, and that that hurts uh, when you're trying. And sometimes when you get a turnover, you take a shot and you take a shot and it's a big play. It's great. You take a shot and you either give up a sack or um, it's incomplete, you're second and 10, and then you're behind the chains a little bit. And, um, yeah, it's something that you don't want to overemphasize. It's like starting the first half or starting the second half and some of those things. But we, we know we've got to capitalize when we do get the turnovers. After missing, oh, go ahead, sorry. After missing previous opportunities, do you think it hurts the players' confidence moving forward with that aspect? No, I, I don't think it, it, it does. Our guys are playing with a lot of confidence right now and a lot of belief. I think that does, that's the biggest thing. They're playing with – such great belief in each other uh, and in the plans that um, they, they feel like, hey, it's, it, we're just just got to stay the course and stay patient, and uh, uh, we'll find a way. Okay, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a good week.